Good evening. Happy Monday to everybody. And it's me again, Alex, your logistic as uh, expert. And we're going to be talking about new topic today. We're going to be talking about the Lumper. What is Lumper? What is Lumper, uh, Lumper services? Who does unloading and loading of your truck? But before we guys going to do that, I would like to say a big thank you to all of our drivers and why i would like to do that because this week is a national truck driver appreciation week i would like to show my gratitude and appreciation just because without truck drivers we would not be having the food on our table we would not be able to fulfill the dreams of our kids to get the toys for them we would not be able to have all the things we have around us. We would not achieve our dreams when we build the companies because without truck drivers, we cannot move freight. We cannot move things around. So please make sure that you thank your uh, truck drivers. If you have family members who are truck drivers, make sure you show your gratitude and appreciation. And of course, in Dispatch Training Center, without trucking uh, uh, truck drivers, we would not be existing because that's what we do. We help people to build trucking uh, companies. We teach how to dispatch our drivers. We need to make sure that we do this really good so they are not wasting their time sitting waiting for the loads because they are already sacrificing a lot. They are not sleeping at home. Sometimes they don't even have time to eat. They don't have time sometimes to rest. And it's not an easy job. So I would like everybody to be thankful. And when you're on the road, make sure that you show your appreciation and thank every truck driver right there in your state. I see uh, my students are coming up because they are not missing my classes. So please, guys, uh, ask all the questions because today... We are going to have our special guest, which I'm going to introduce to you a little bit later. And first, let's think about terminology, because you need to understand um, what are we going to be talking about. So what is Lumper and Logistics? Well, the Lumper service, it's when the shippers or receivers hire third party workers to help you to load or unload freight many of you know you come to the shippers and they're gonna say well we have a lumper service you need to pay most of the times we have to pay the fee and they will be load or unload our trucks so that's what means lumper loading or unloading it can be on a both sides on a shipper side and on the receiver side who pays the lumper fees well usually the new dispatchers are get confused driver calls you and he's asked well i need 200 dollars for lumper fees and you guys get frustrated well where do i have to take this money of the rate confirmation do i have to personally give it from the company money or who is in charge of lumper fees well, first, I want you to remember that lumper fees have to be approved by the broker. So let's say if you took the load from Coyote Logistics, you guys have a load number. Before you even give an EFS check or come check to your driver, if you decide to pay, you need to make sure that this amount is approved. Why is it important? Well, this is important because sometimes lumper fees can be way higher than was arranged between the broker and receiver or the customer. If you did not validate that amount is approved by your broker, you might be paying the difference out of your pocket. So make sure new dispatchers always validate that this lumper is approved that's why i made the rule i want to make sure that every lumper is approved so my drivers contact the broker directly 
and they are telling them, well, I am on a load 105677 from Chicago to Memphis. I am with Alex Transportation. They want to have $275 for unloading of my truck. And most of the time, the broker is going to say, well, would you like us to pay or are you going to pay and we're going to reimburse you with a valid receipt? Let's memorize it. We will reimburse you with a valid receipt. So what does it mean? If you gave EFS check, COM check, T check, or maybe your driver pay his own credit card or company credit card, $275. What two steps you will need to do as a dispatcher? First, you need to make sure that he sends to your receipt with BOLs. And hopefully those BOLs are clean BOLs. My students already know the meaning of clean BOLs. Oh, no OS in these, no overage, no shortage, no damage, no rejection, plus lumper receipt. You're going to email to your broker. Hi, Mike, how are you? It's Alex, Alex Transportation. We just paid lumper at receiver $270. Please send me revised rate confirmation. Well, if the amount was approved, and let's say load was $2,000, he's going to send you the new rate confirmation, which is going to have $2,000 for freight movement from A to B and added lumper service paid by you, $275. So now you're going to send your invoice into the factory in totaling $2,275. Let's say we have a different scenario. Your driver, Mike, called the broker and they gave him come check. You as a dispatcher, what steps do you need to do? Well, you still need to provide come check receipt or T check or come data check to broker. If you're not going to send them receipt, what's going to happen? Well, they paid for the lumper but they're going to deduct from your rate. If you did not provide the receipt with your billing, 30 days later, 45 days, uh, uh, five days later, you're going to see shortage for how much? $275. Who is going to be frustrated? Well, owner is going to be frustrated. You're going to be frustrated because you're going to tell, well, we did not do anything wrong. We delivered the load. We are not in, char in uh, charge of unloading, unloading. But again, every rate confirmation is going to tell you to get reimbursed for lumper receipt or not to have short payment. You need to provide the valid receipt. Simple as this. This is not hard. This is very easy. So lumper receipt is reimbursed by the broker. Let's see what else we need to know before we're going to invite our guest. What are the accessorial charges? You can see that in a lot of rate confirmations from brokers. And they're going to say, well, all the accessorial charges are going to be reimbursed if agreed with, uh, you know, upon uh, the agreement of the load. Well, you have to understand that we have different accessorial charges, right? What are they? Well, they are charged by the freight carriers, actually freight brokers, for any services that go beyond normal pickup and delivery, not just loading, unloading. What if you need to do the uh, count? What if they have to do breakdown of the product? What if you have to go and use a cross-docking facility? I mean, uh, what other examples? Anything which has to do beyond your driver just pick up and deliver, this is going to be accessorial uh, fees. Usually, you as a dispatcher, are you going to be in charge of determining? No. Usually, the freight broker 
and receiver or shipper or whoever the buyer is, whoever is the customer, they agree on those. You have no power over, over this. It's not your problem. You don't have to really worry about it. You only need to make sure when you book the load, you always ask, are there going to be any lumper fees at the receiver or shipper? Is my driver going to do any driver assist, right? And what are the expected lumper fees? Why do you want to ask this? Because again, you want to make sure that lumper service doesn't just make up a number because today they feel like making extra $150, $200, right? So you want to make sure that you approximately know that lumper fee will be around $150, $170 or $200. So let's see, what is the average lumper fee? Well, usually it can range between $25 to $500. Well, from my experience, I don't remember when I ever sold $25. The highest lumper I've ever had to uh, prove for my driver, which was reimbursed to me, was for my reefer in California. And I believe it was C uh, Cisco, the Riverside, and the lumper was $685, which for me, I think it was kind of high because we only had uh, 12 pallets. They did not have to break down the product, but we're going to ask our guest, what does he think is $682 for 12 pallet, pallets of minus 10 degrees? Is that something common in the industry or maybe they just they took advantage and they charge extra fees we'll see again what else do we need to know as i said every time when we're gonna be booking the load we're gonna ask is this one-on-one -on -one? what does it one-on-one -on -one means one-on-one -on -one means one pick one drop and we always gonna ask is there any driver assist Driver assist is something the driver has to do. He has to assist with loading and unloading. I guess we're in the places where they don't have the lumper service, or maybe they don't have, um, I don't know, workers at that time. Who is going to compensate you for this? Well, if your driver has to do driver assist, this is up to you to negotiate before you pick up the load. So if there are any driver assist, you need to know the details. You need to know what is it going to be involved and you need to negotiate. My students already know, can a dispatcher decide if his driver is willing to do driver assist? No, not really. You need to verify what is the commodity. You need to verify how he's going to be uh, assisting. Because one thing, if he has a power jack and maybe it's just few pallets, what if it's a Christmas tree, right? 12 feet. Remember, I gave you an example of my driver assisting with a 12 feet Christmas tree coming from the Oregon with four drops. Every tree he had to carry by himself. Do you really think it's easy? No, that's not that easy. And can I, as a dispatcher, tell, oh, my driver is okay. No, I cannot. Can I, as a company owner, can tell my driver, you know what? You are going to do driver assist. Well, if that's described in my contract and we have an understanding and my driver was okay, I'd better have that in writing because actually it is not a part of my driver jobs. So again, driver assist. You discuss this in the beginning. Let's say they did not tell you the truth. Your driver comes to unload and they said, well, your driver was supposed to assist. We already paid the broker for assisting uh, with unloading, right? And let's say it's mattresses. I had it happen once big mattresses and my driver is like no i'm not doing this well here is a tricky situation what can you do they had no lumper service 
in this in this case well you're gonna use your power and you're gonna talk to the driver and the broker did not want to pay any extra money as the owner of the business i had to compensate my driver so i told my driver hey steven i understand it's not fair it was not discussed with me nothing i can do but how much would you want me to pay to do this and if you're physically okay because if you would say no i cannot do this of course i would look into different options i probably would park the truck and look for the lumber service in the area and hire somebody in my case my driver said alex yes i'll do it you will have to pay me 200 dollars for unloading this i said no problem was i compensating from the broker no did i had uh, any other options not really but this is my business can i just sit that hours and hours and start to uh be pissed at the broker tell them how unfair trucking business is yes of course we can just waste hours we can sit and tell that oh my god i'm gonna get an attorney for this 200 dollars yes you guys can do that but as a business person sometimes you have to make the right decision and the right decision is to get rid of that commodity from your truck and that's what sometimes you guys gonna do well we're gonna have short break and i am gonna introduce you um our guest and he is actually owner of exe logistics solutions and i met him uh, in las vegas on the convention logistic convention he's a great guy he's actually a pioneer of this industry and we're gonna be asking him questions so let's see what is a lumper service is it really that easy to create lumper service what are the challenges why is they charging us that 682 dollars and it still takes forever right but he's a great guy we're gonna see him in 30 seconds after our commercial for our next classes so i'll be right back with you Well, hi, Dal. How are you? Good, good. And you? I'm good. You are live now, so everybody can see you. They can hear you. On the bottom, you're going to see the, any questions they will be asking us. But first, please uh, tell us your story. I've been uh, actually just reading on your website about all your good things you do that you know as a founder of three unloading services in capstone formerly known as spls leader coach entrepreneur speaker after volunteer and all other things you do and you're a great person i would not bring anybody who would not cut my attention so i am really glad to have you here so tell me your story what challenges do you have how did you come to this and let's start with that being an author what did you write what is the book about well, first, let me say thank you, Alex, for allowing me to come on with you. And I am so impressed with your your show and what you do. I think it's needed tremendously, and especially when you're focused on helping females in the industry. I, I just I love that and and enjoying already what I've heard just these few short days that I've gotten to know you. But uh, my story is. Uh, you know, I'm 66. I'm an old dude. So uh, I've been around. And when I was younger, uh, back in the 70s, I struggled uh, in school. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I flunked out of college. Uh, and as a result, it was the, the main reason was because of, uh, of uh, dyslexia. So I'm a dyslexic. So if you ever get me to do anything with numbers or letters, you can count on it being switched around. So just expect that. But uh, what happened was uh, as 
I matured in life and I realized what my challenges were. I also realized it, it gave me a strength. And the challenge I had was there were certain things I couldn't do. Couldn't spell well, couldn't spell at all, really. Had trouble reading. And, uh, but what I ended up doing was having other people do the work that I couldn't do. And you know, if I, I found out if you pay them, they're more than happy to do that. <laughs> delegation, so, delegation. We all can be organizers and leaders. Exactly. Sometimes you need to delegate. And if you can do that, you can be very successful. Exactly. And I found out I was a motivator. And I could encourage folks to do jobs maybe they didn't necessarily want to do, mm -hmm. but I encouraged them to do it. And just like you did with that truck driver, gave them options, gave them respect. And I usually find out when you give people options and respect, they'll go overboard for you. And uh, so as I, as I went through life, I found out that that dyslexia problem I have actually became a strength for me because I learned how to delegate. And you really can't grow a business unless you delegate and let things go. And I have built multiple unloading services. We don't like to use the term lumper. <laughs> and the reason is, is just what you described. It's known as somebody that you don't want to deal with, somebody you don't want to pay, somebody that's not going to do a good job necessarily. It's going to be too slow. They're going to have a bad attitude. And you could just go on the list, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, what happened was my dad, and many, later. many years ago, back in the 70s, got transferred to, to, to Memphis to run a warehouse for General Tire. And while he was running that warehouse at General Tire, he discovered that he needed to get somebody to come in and manage the lumpers. So a lumper originally... Uh, the original definition of lumper started in Europe where people would take a bag of products uh, called a lump. They'd throw it over their shoulder and they would load it onto one of the ships that were shipping across the oceans. And, and that's where we've traced the term lumper back to. Well, as, it, as we got to the United States and as the trucking industry started to, uh, you know, take over, then lumpers moved inland and started unloading uh, freight that was the owner of the trucker before it was the owner of the warehouse for the trucker would unload that freight and stage it onto the dock. And, and as the years went along, those folks that were doing that work became problems. They weren't paying any taxes. They didn't have any insurance, a lot of drug use, a lot of alcohol use. Most truckers that know anything about lumpers from the past will know there was a gathering in some area that was bad and they would get a hold of those lumpers because they'd flag them down. They'd jump on their truck and say, let me unload your load. Okay. And they would allow them to unload their load. They pay them some cash and go on to the next load. Well, my dad took that, that concept and he hired a guy and he says, come do this. Come manage these guys for me. And he did. Did that for a year, and then he put my brother in business. Most people know my brother is as Impact Logistics. He's, okay. he's, he's a $50 million company. He has hun hundreds of employees. He's been in business almost 40 years now in the unloading industry. And he's probably, if not first of a legitimate unloading service, second in, in the country. I worked for him for five years, with him for five years, and then we split up, and that's when I created PLS. Why would you split up? Family business. What yeah, it's tough. I mean, the, come on, you're boys. You're you're not our, like girls. We have drama. We you yeah. <laughs> well, we didn't on. have we didn't have that much drama, but I was I'm ten years older than him. Okay. So he had his ideas, and I had mine, and we decided to go different ways, but we're still good buddies. Matter of fact, I'm going to his his wedding this coming Friday here in Memphis in a, in a few days, but uh, we're good buddies and, and we've managed to go our ways and still do well over the years. And he's, uh, I created PLS uh, 10 years later. PLS. So PLS, it's the name of the, your original was progressive okay. loading service. Okay. And then I partnered with a venture capital group in Atlanta 
and we changed the name to Progressive Logistics Services. How many people you were employing in that company? At that point, about 600. 600. Yep. And yeah. then eventually, after they to totally bought me out, uh, they changed the name again to Capstone. Oh, so, Capstone. That's what I see all the time yeah. on my revised rate confirmation. Yep. It's a Capstone receipt. So that's I founded Capstone. dollars right yep. now. So your story is grateful. You are inspiring, especially you telling us that you uh, went over the challenges that you were uh, facing personally. And as you said, not everybody has to finish the college. Not everybody has to have two master's degrees, speak six languages like some people do. You just yeah. have to make sure you, you're jealous. Well, don't be jealous. I have an accent. I have an accent and I always think of accent. Also, and I don't accent. have an accent. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> because of my accent, I cannot go to the next level, right? Oh, I don't believe that. <laughs> so, but let's let's go back because yeah. uh, all my students, they know that I'm going to be throwing there and I'm always going to be on the side of the carrier, on the side yeah. of the truck yep. uh, companies. Yep. Why do we have the bad reputation for the lumber? Same as everybody says that dispatchers are not good. Dispatch services sucks and why because we have a lot of bad people who do not good dispatch yeah but for me the lumber service when i actually met you in las vegas uh we did a little interview and when you told me that it's not our fault tell me how much time do you have to unload each truck in general is yeah. that something you uh, schedule is that something you do how does it work because as a third party so what does it mean third party let's talk let's talk about you being on the side of uh i don't know what is your biggest uh um... you said you mentioned cisco yeah cisco let's talk, let's about, talk cisco. about cisco okay let's talk about cisco so you on the premises of cisco cisco right. owns the warehouse right. i am a truck company alex transportation right. my driver drove all the way from California, poor guy right. did not sleep for four days. He's right. delivering those grapes to Cisco. Right. Lumber fee is five hundred dollars. I well, that... being a good dispatcher. Hold on, yep, hold on. Yep, being a good dispatcher, I am saying okay. He's a reefer. His strict appointment in Cisco seven o'clock, seven, eight, nine, ten. I already found him the great load picking up at eleven o'clock. 10 miles away because I'm a professional dispatcher. My dad has uh, eliminated. I do my job. He did his job. Seven, eight, nine, ten. I am receiving the call. Alex, still not unloaded. Still not unloaded. Well, Alex calling who? Broker. Well, which dock number? 27. What's going on? Well, just keep track of the hours. We're going to pay you detention. Well, I don't want your detention. I don't need your $30. I need to move to my next load. So here I am, knowing that Dal Hamilton is a co-owner. Now, since I have your personal number, I am going to say, Dal, what the hell's going on? You right. told me you've been in business for 50 years. You promised me that you guys do a good job. Why my truck sitting there for seven hours? Answer yeah, that. yeah. There's and we are playing this scenario. But oh I... yeah, sure, sure. So, so there's multiple uh, potentials for failure. Okay. Okay. One is that the freight that that goes into a DC, especially in the food business, is never consistent. It's always a whole lot or not much. We, as unloading services, have to maintain a team there to make sure that every load that hits the door, there's somebody there that's able to unload it quickly, efficiently, and safely, and correctly. Because a load that's unloaded incorrectly is not complete. All that does is just cause problems with the checker and causes delays. So we have to have a team of people that are ready to go and are qualified to unload that freight when it hits the door. Let's hit it. stop right here. Yes. What qualification means? What is a person who works for your lumber service has to have or do or be trained in? Do they have any licenses, any any certifications? What is a qualified 
Lumper, I mean, you you know, you don't want to ask to call you Lumper, guys. I guess it's all right. Unloading, all right. unloading <laughs> a employer of the best uh, logistic solution. So, what is the qualification? We call that? them industrial athletes. <laughs> okay, industrial athletes. So, I guess he has to be physically able to move the freight, right? Okay, first, yes. knowledgeable of the freight that's coming in, how to sort and segregate that freight so that it's it's correct on the pallet. Knowledgeable about what? Pallets, weight, distribution? The lot numbers. Okay. All of the different lot numbers, the different product codes, because you can't mix that product that goes into the rack. It has to be sort and segregated in the right way. And if it's not, then the checker, when he's checking it, will either check it wrong or we'll have to have it corrected. So, that's so it needs to be unloaded correctly first. Okay, so you guys, when you unload, you're not the people who actually scan and count? Correct. But it has to be the right way on the pallet. So who does that? The checker. The checker from the, the warehouse. The checker works for warehouse. For Correct. For Cisco, let's say, right? Correct. Okay, so, so I but, have to start screaming at checker then, not at the lumper guy. Exactly. <laughs> oh, okay. So we get him somewhere. We can always dump on the checker because it's easy to do. But <laughs> okay, let, let's say this guy, let's pretend his name is Mike. He's working for you per truck. How much time he has to unload? Let's say regular, you know, 22 pallets, reefer, not much, you know, not really. You know, he doesn't have to break anything just to unload. How much time do you specify for him? Are you on schedule or he just goes and he's like, don't worry, Dal, you're paying me. Let me take my sweet time. I'll take one pallet. I'm going to go take a break, right? Well, I'll go around. Here's right. another two pallets. Well, Dal is not here. Dal is somewhere in Tennessee. This Cisco is somewhere on the East Coast. I mean, I'm working, right? We're going to get there. So who is controlling the time and how efficient they are loading? So there's an overall uh, structure that each warehouse has that guides everybody as far as how long they want to take to unload all of the freight comes in. And whether it's an easy, a, slow, a light day or a heavy day, it doesn't matter. We have to staff based upon whether it's light or heavy. So that means we have to look at the future and see what's coming in, the types of loads that are coming in, and the number of loads that are coming in, and make sure we have the right staff there. If we don't, if we're understaffed, then that will slow things down. But as a general rule, the unloading service needs to be in an eight hour shift, needs to be, needs to have all of the freight off of every truck and staged onto the dock in six hours. And then the checkers have an extra two hours to finish up checking the product in. So if you're there at the end of the day or in the middle of the day, that could be when all of the loads are, are crushing the dock. We have, we have flooded the dock. There's no room. The people that are, now there's another group of people that take the freight and put it away into the racks after the checkers check it. Okay. Okay. So, so that could cause a problem too. So if they're shorthanded in the warehouse by not having enough forklift drivers, mm -hmm. or if they're shorthanded by not having enough checkers and we flood the dock with freight, then there's a bottleneck. And so that why don't you help them? You have enough workers, just charge, charge them and just help them to put it on the rack to check, you know? Come on, it's, we're a businessman. <laughs> so we, we, we're guests. You have to understand that we're actually guests or we rent the ability to be in their building. So you're the trucker is our customer and also the warehouse is our customer. So we will unload the back calls and logistics loads for the warehouse and charge the warehouse. And then we will unload the, 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 what we call cash or outside carrier loads mm -hmm. for the drivers. Now, the outside carrier loads are usually what are called live loads. We need them in and out. Our rule of thumb for detention is two hours or less. Okay. So if, it, if it's a five-hour load, 
let's say it takes one man five hours to unload that load, we still have to get it out in two hours. That means we have to double up, triple up, do whatever we can, putting people in that load to get it off and on the, on the floor so it can be checked so the driver can still leave in two hours. If your driver is being held up longer than that, there's some kind of problem going on in so the warehouse. As a dispatcher, as a dispatcher yeah. should I call the receiving office? Yes, without a doubt. You could, if you have a relationship with the trucking company, I mean, with the unloading service, call them. Can I have a relationship in every ser uh, service? Uh, every warehouse that you go in. That you go, you have, because I want my truck to be in and out. And all my students' truck, please, they're going to just yeah. mention. I, I, I took classes from Alex. Can my truck get <laughs> unloaded in five Exactly. <laughs> but if you're a dispatcher, one of the key things, one of the key res relationships you need to develop is relationships with all of the unloading services. And if you find yourself going back to the same warehouse over and over again, you can get that relationship with the manager that's there and, and, and they will watch out for you. It's not that they're going to push you up in front of somebody else because we don't control what's put to the dock. The unloading service does not control what's put to the dock. Okay. It's the warehouse. It's the check, the uh, receiver in the warehouse. So let me ask you this. You told me get friendly, right? I am a European woman. I am a uh, woman in a business. So here you go. I'm going to give each of my driver extra 20 bucks, extra no. 30 bucks of no. cash. And I'm going to tell him, go and make a relationship. Make no, sure no, no, no. Get yep. out of the dock. So let's talk about it. I have receivers and shippers who will come up to my drivers and who says, well, you want to get out of here? 20 bucks or buy them as the lunch. Actually, don't even just buy us the lunch. We want a lunch from this pizzeria. We want, and you know what? As a business person, I sometimes say, yes, just do it. I need you to mow out of there. Is that a good thing to do? No. no. In my opinion, no. For all, I mean, that is uh, graft and, and bribes. We've been trying for years and years and years to get out of the uh, unloading service it's always been that the drivers, the forklift drivers and the checkers had their hands out asking for money so that a lumper will pick a load, a certain load that maybe a driver needs unloaded. And all of that, as we came in, we started to flush all of that out. So my, my recommend, recommendation to you is, is that if, if, a, if anybody ask some kind of bribe and that's a bribe. That's all it is. I know it's building a relationship. Illegal. It's immoral. It's unethical. In my opinion, if anybody ask, ask you to do it, then you immediately go as high up in the warehouse as you can go and you report it. And I have had situations where I've, I've done it. I've done it with warehouses that I've worked at when I had proof. Don't do it if you don't have proof because all you do is get a bad reputation as a complainer. But if you've got proof, go as high in the warehouse as you can, report them, and you, you, you might be surprised to see the response in a positive way. And that stop. Wow. But the only way the warehouse can stop those things is if they know about it and they have proof. They're willing to address it, but you have to help them. Yeah, but you have to be on the driver's side. My driver is going to say... Yes, well, that's being on the driver's side. It's easier to pay $20 because if I'm going to go complain, I know what's going to happen. They're going to punish me. It's no. not a lumber service than the office because they all work together. I, I, had, it so. I had it happen when I had to okay. call and say, guys, my guy is already unloaded, even with the paperwork. Can you speed up? Can you please speed up? We have to go to the next load. And you know what? It depends who is there and what kind of moods they are. They are punishing my driver. I had a situation in Juliet cold storage two weeks ago. My driver came there on time. The appointment was 5 p.m. They did not take him till 10. And then they said, well, we don't have the space. 
uh, we don't have the space for this product. We're going to unload you tomorrow sometime. Hmm. Well, this guy was going on vacation. He has a flying ticket. I don't have another driver who can sit there. I called once. I was talking to the girls in the office while well, they were ignorant. They're like, well, don't call here. Don't bother us. It's not our problem. I'm like, well, we had a strict appointment. I hold a broker. Broker, it was Friday night. Did not even answer. No after hours, no nothing. Finally, mm -hmm. at 12 at midnight, I'm like, what I'm going to do? I have to find a driver. I'm not going to punish my driver not to go on vacation and fly with his family. Yeah. I'm calling and I'm asking, can I talk to the manager? Well, I guess what? Manager was in a pissy mood. He said, well, you already called twice. You know what? If you don't really understand that we can take as long as it takes, I will tell you this. We will not unload your truck at all. So now it's your problem. So Dal, as a woman in a business, especially knowing that my driver did his job, knowing that we already patiently sitting there for eight hours. Yeah. Well, my so, well what can I do? And of course, yeah. you know what? I yeah. had to go. I had to swallow my ego and I yeah. had to beg him, beg yeah. him over the phone. I had to call three in the morning, five in the morning, and finally seven in the morning when the shift was changed, that somebody else came and yeah. I guess he was in a better mood and he unloaded my truck. Did yeah. my driver deserve that? No, no, he did his job. Did I, as a dispatcher, deserve it? No. Did broker care? Nobody cared. Yeah. Nobody cared. And I am not uh, scared. And I told, I will never, ever going to go to Juliet cold storage again. If yeah. I know that it's Juliet and somebody is giving me right confirmation and I see that it's a Juliet cold storage, and I gave them a review because when you open their Google reviews, you have 100 people who complain about it. Yeah. And you know their response is, yeah. well, we don't care. It's not a problem shortage. This management yeah. needs to address that because it's been going like this for years and years and years. But who is in fault? It's always us. Well, I, I agree. You know, there you, there's just going to be situations where you can't avoid ugly people. That's just, it's just and going I was hard. trying to go and make complaint to their higher ups. Yeah. I did not succeed. I went on their website because I was like, you know what? This is ridiculous because I did record it all the conversation and it was just, I did not deserve it. The way they were talking back to right. my driver. You know what? When the driver came and checked what's going on. The manager came out and said, you're going to come here to the office one more time. I'm going to call police on you. Police for what? That he's sitting there already for 10 hours just trying to see what's going on? Police yeah. for what? That he brought you product that you making money of it? Yeah. Somebody somebody ordered. He did his job. So yeah. this, this nonsense is going on. That's why most of the time we have this bad situation happens and everybody blames you. That's why when we were talking with you in Las Vegas, I want to bring it up and say that you a third party. And a lot of times this is not your employees who unload truck, but this is a checker. This is a people who have to still go through bill of lettings. And sometimes they have so many steps, yeah. that, but everybody blames you. It's like everybody blames dispatchers and truck in business. Why the market goes down. Everybody plays a lumber service, right? Well, we're, we're easy to, to blame because, you know, we're just kind of like the low man on the totem pole when it comes to all of that and we get it, you know, but when I founded PLS and my brother, he had impact logistics. We both had a mission to do two things. One is to, to provide a good quality service for the drivers that, that we service. My motto was your need, our pleasure to serve. And that's the way we viewed it when it came to the drivers, we knew, the drivers had a very tough job. They were driving all the way across country. They weren't being told the truth about what they were going to see whenever they got to our warehouse. They were in shock when they realized how much money was going to be charged. And they also were tired and they, you know, they were just worn out. And now they're going to have to unload this load or 
think about unloading this load. And if that doesn't put you in a bad mood, I don't know what will. So we've always trained our managers to treat our, the drivers with dignity and respect, encourage them to go to their truck and rest, and we'll take care of all the negotiations with their, their dispatcher or their broker or whoever, and then they will then, then the dispatcher will let them know what to do next. If there's, if there's any, and typically we don't like to, to negotiate pricing because all that does is create a lot of uh, problems on the dock. And that's why another reason uh, uh, that I established a national price list for our unloading service that we published that was on the wall of every warehouse that we were in. Pricing, right? So, so- yeah. So, so that you could take your load and you could find your load on that on that price list. And that was the same price today, tomorrow, next week. It didn't matter if you were disabled driver or a driver that was totally fit. The price was still the same. And and uh, OSHA, uh, well, let me tell you the other reason, the other goal I had. That was to professionalize the unloading service, to change the attitude of the way that people thought about an unloading service by becoming professionals. And that's another reason why we tried to not use the lumper term is because we wanted to re-educate people on people that were coming to work. They were learning their craft. They were supplying a living for their families and they were coming and being dependable employees and working their butts off. And if you've ever unloaded a load, you know how hard it is. It is not easy. And that's why we called them industrial athletes. And that's why we put uniforms on our associates. That's why we call them associates or unloaders and not lumpers. Now, the term is hard to get away from. Everybody uses it. Well, we're going to make sure we change that. So now, (laughs) but we try. I will make sure that we do that. Yeah, those two areas, I think, were my main mission as I built the unloading industry is respect of a driver and, and creating a professional service that people could, could appreciate. Now, back to your discussion about dealing with money and bribes and stuff like that. The only way that we were able to eliminate the checkers and the forklift drivers and those types of people from taking bribes to get their loads unloaded was to report them. Yes, we got some abuse because of it. I've had, uh, we've had our tires slashed. We've had guys getting shot at. You know, that those types of things have happened over the years. But to change, to change a ship, it takes a lot, right? Well, and it, it takes, takes first, it takes a captain. So it seems like you're a great captain. Well, we're trying, we're yeah. trying. And we're, and, and I'm small potatoes in the industry today. My company is very small. We're only, we're only about 100 people. And uh, we're only in two uh, food service accounts, this company. Uh, but uh, my, mich- my you know, desire is to continue to educate folks. And that's why I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to come and talk, because I can do that. And, and, and if... if If you appeal, and I keep saying this to to everybody, appeal, don't demand, don't threaten, appeal. If you keep appealing and keep going up the ladder as you appeal, you will get their attention and you will get a, a good response eventually. It may not happen in the beginning, but just keep trying. Just keep trying is what I'm saying. Sounds good. What are the challenges right now to find the qualified workers? Do you have a challenge? Because, for example, in the trucking industry, we have a biggest challenge for trucking industry, the shortage of qualified drivers. Yes. It's a shortage of drivers, but it's extreme shortage of qualified drivers. Right. Do you face the same uh, challenges or you guys okay is it easy for you to find the employees are they loyal do they stay with you i mean what is the turn turn uh, over in your industry yeah it is it is very difficult of course a driver is a technical person and as a skilled person an unloader can gain skill 
but they don't have to come in with skill where a truck driver has to come in with a lot of skill. And so it's have certification for your uh, employees. We do when it comes to operating equipment. And this is where OSHA has stepped in and changed things for the driver as far as unloading loads. But let me answer your question about the difficulty of finding people. We are short probably 30 associates today, right now. Every warehouse that we work in is short associates. Every warehouse I've ever worked in in the last 30 years has been shorthanded, every one. The problem of shortages on drivers and shortages of people in warehouses has been the same for the last 30 years. It's harder now because we're competing against the U.S. government as far as uh, for different benefits that folks are getting to sit at home. That so that makes it even more difficult. It's easier to sit on unemployment than to go to work. Exactly. And, and, and we're competing financially with the, with the government because if, if I understand it correctly, a person that's on unemployment is going to be making around $40,000 a year. That's What's quite that? a... What is the average salary for your uh, employees in the beginning? If, there's two pay, pay types in our industry, hourly and incentive base. Mm -hmm. Most of the food service or strict lumping type uh, jobs where people are unloading live loads, the range, the range can be as low as $20 an hour and high as $30 an hour because they're getting paid by the piece or by the pallet or by the load. So the faster and more safe and more uh, efficient and, and accurate their work is, the more they do, the more they can make. And they earn every dime of it. If you watch experienced unloaders, they have, they're wringing wet from sweat. That's how hard they're working. And they do that every day, day in and day out. Mm -hmm. I have people that will walk in and unload a half a load and walk out and never come back again. Our turnover rate on new associates in new facilities is about 80%. That's a very high. Yes. Great. Very high. Yeah, People also, are just not interested in doing physical well, labor. We're also dealing is with a new generation, and a new generation does not really want to work that physically hard. They want to make sure that they just click on something, like PlayStation. They just want money to grow in the trees. So right. We know that it's not the truth. So yeah. this is the way... Everything changing. That's why shortage of the drivers because that no, it's not an easy job. And again, we've been challenging so uh, different situation with the COVID and everything else. Right. Some people just not willing to go and work this uh, this hard. I mean, this is this is not an easy job. No, I mean, it's not. It's a tough job, and and it's not something we don't. It's not a career job if you really think about it. This is not something that's going to be, they're going to do for the rest now, of their lives. If, I, if, I, if I'm going to be done with teaching and I'm going to be unemployed and I come and I start working, unloading the trucks, I cannot make a year with you? Come on. You no? be <laughs> we're, our average, we're looking at two weeks to two months. That's it? Two weeks to two months. That's wow. our average. So you don't even uh, have a chance to know the person and you have a new employee. So this is like a, a game, non-stopping game. It is. Teaching them, training them, yeah. finally getting them to do the good job and they quit on you already, right? I think probably if you think about it, the last three years our, our company has been in business. We probably have, if we have 100, 100, 120 Total associates, that's 50 of our own employees and about 60 or 70 temporary staff that we that we use agencies with. Um, then uh, you're probably looking at maybe 10, 10 or 15 people that have been with us more than a year. Wow. So you are hiring, right? So if oh, we, yeah. have, <laughs> we have people who want to get a job, so you are yep. hiring. So if, you're in, <laughs> if you're in Danville, Illinois... Austin, Denver, Texas, okay. Franklin, Tennessee, Richmond, Virginia, or Winchester, Virginia, we got a job for you. <laughs> we got a job, so that's good to know. Yeah.
I want a little bit to go around some terminology. And, you know, because sure. you've been in the business for 50 years, and, of course, we have our new dispatchers. I don't see any questions. I guess they don't really know about the lumber service yet. They did not deal with the situation. Hopefully, they're going to be asking us questions. But let's look at this. You said that you, and we're not going to talk if you offer or not, but what does it mean? What does it mean, truckload? A full truckload is typically a load that's either on pallets or on the floor. It can be in a 53 foot or a 48 foot or even a, 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 a container. And so when we're talking about a full load, that's what we mean. LTL would be a less than truckload load, could be. 20 pallets, 10 pallets, five pallets. That'd be an well, LTL. You have a combination. What if you have, uh, let's say, five different LTLs? Would it be more challenging to unload that? Oh, yes. It's, it's, it's starting pallets to finish pallets. Mm -hmm. So you may start with 24 pallets or 48 pallets if they're double stacked. And it may go to 48 or even... I've seen loads go to as many as 120 pallets where they would only have two or three cases on each pallet. And that means an unloader has to grab all those pallets, lay them out on the floor, take that product that's on the, the truck and sort and segregate it, put it on the different pallets so that they're, they're ready to be checked. And those are those three and four and five hour loads that take quite a while to, to, to untangle. So do you think it's important for dispatcher to ask how yes. many pallets is going to be on this load? Right? If you want to know, yeah, if you want to know the time that it's going to take to unload a load, get the, the starting pallets and the finished pallets. If you start with 24, in with 24, that's a straight pull off. Okay. If you start with 24, in with 48, that means half the load they're going to have to break down. They may have to touch every case on that trailer to make it work, but at least half of that trailer is going to be touched by the hands. And here's the challenges. Every time I ask TQL boys, young boys, or Coyote boys, or C.H. Robinson, they're like, oh, I'm not sure it's going to be a truckload. Well, lots of pallets. Sometimes they don't even know the count of the pallets. The, but again, so, that's right. one of the challenges I yeah. have in my classes. Because you know the information you can predict. That's not just only, well, is it palletized? Yes, of course, it's if it's floor loaded, that means a different securement. But also, if it's a double stack, does it have to be broke down? So then I know how long is it going to take? Because as you said, you take the unloading an hour, maybe hour and a half, maybe 20 minutes. But again, if somebody has to break it down, if then checker has to go and scan every every different product of course it's gonna take longer so from right. only knowing this i am teaching my students to stay away from some receivers and some shippers and right. i can give you example target cvs cns because again lts will combine yeah dollar general so when you really think about even you going to the dollar general right how many different items do they have so if i am bringing double stack Full truck load, or a two dollar general with list of so many items. Of course, it's not gonna take thirty minutes. Of course, it's not gonna take two hours. Right. I am usually hoping for five. Right. I get out of there five hours. I consider myself being lucky with dollar general. Well, so, yeah, that's that shouldn't happen. Really, shouldn't happen. Uh, there's that's a, that's a problem. That's a comment. So, yeah. Carolina, she's my. But, Actually, she was my uh, former student. She won our free class because, as I told you, we change industry. So I do award free classes to people who write us their story and we can help somebody. So she was one of our students and actually she's a driver. So see, she says, you always write out the true scenario of the shippers and receivers is very different. They are not interested in the driver's at all and she's a real driver and she's a woman truck driver so she's been dealing with this all the time yeah and it's not fair because if you do your job she does her job i do my job as a dispatcher this should be organized better well i can tell you this that uh, almost all of the the, the the major companies 
like the targets and the and the, those type of companies. When you're talking about the upper management of that facility, the warehouse manager, the operations manager, the DC manager, their and their staff, they ha- they preach over and over again to their people to respect drivers because without the drivers wouldn't have the product to unload. And it's, it's, it's preached from the top. That doesn't mean it always gets down to their level, you know, to the, to the lower levels that are actually people that are actually working with the drivers. And that's a shame. But again, if you appeal, if you let those folks know, and let me go back to the pricing again, just real quick. Mm -hmm. Have a, like I said, have a relationship with the unloading service. You can call them and tell them what the load is. And nine times out of 10, they'll tell you what the price is going to be when you get to the door, to uh, get to the warehouse. See, Dal, we're not really worried about pricing because usually this is something which is a broker. No, it's a pass through. Yeah, yeah, so, so we don't really, as a trucking company, we don't really. Uh, I mean, if you need to know that, that's what I'm saying. If you need to know. Saying. So that's yeah. why the brokers usually take care of that. That's why for the dispatchers, it's yeah. important to know that that amount is approved by broker. They cannot right. just say, well, oh, Adele, you want to charge $500? Okay, here's a comp check. And then, as I told you, we called the broker and he said, no. We had agreement with Dell. It's going to be two hundred fifty. Why did you pay five hundred dollars? And that's that's another good good point, which I say, go back to the unloading service and make them send you their price list. Okay. Email me your price list. I want to see this load on your price list, and if you can't show me this load on your price list, I want to hear hear your your reasoning for this load to be this high. Those that grapes that was six hundred eighty dollars. There had to be something going on well, because there's no way that 12 pallets before the holidays, they I would mean, have to unload those grapes, one grape at a time. And it took actually six <laughs> hours. That's why I said, oh my yeah, God, well, something, something uh, that didn't get the message getting through. But I mean, it could have been outright fraud, uh, you know, by the, by the, by the service or the warehouse. Well, it was I mean, it happens, you know, it, it happens. But by the broker, they paid, but my, my uh, confusion was for six hundred sixty-eight dollars right. to load twelve fourteen pallets of non-breaking. It should not take six hours. No way. Unless, has, unless, yeah. unless it was sitting on the floor, unless I did not have a space or something. But we're not gonna know. That's, that's not why, your fault. Yeah. That's why mm-hmm. most most of my uh, trailers. When uh, I had my bigger company, now I'm just running my husband's company, and I also dispatch other people. Uh, companies, I invested extra money to have cameras inside of my trailers. Oh, yeah. So this way, I know my truck was not touched. You telling me that it's almost empty? You did not even open it. Right. And of course, I don't like that because when you call and say, guys, what's going on? My truck is on dock 57. You telling me that he's almost done? You did not even start it. So there's another you thing you can do too. The unloading services, a lot of the unloading services have uh, pretty sophisticated software programs themselves these days, and they actually track an unload as it's being unloaded. And they might could tell you, if, like I said, that relationship with the unloading service, a positive relationship with the unloading service will get you a lot of information that you might not have if you didn't have that relationship. Well, and when it's a relationship, you. I'm not talking about paying money. I'm talking about being friends, you know? Let me ask you this. I had a situation happen. My driver left the facility and he forgot to uh, take the receipt, right? I had to reach out to receiver. And Laddie said, well, it's not a problem. This is your driver's fault. Finally, I found the BOLs from my different driver from this facility and on the receipt, I found the name and it was actually Cape, uh, whatever, Cape uh, Stone, right? Cape Stone. And it was a number. Yeah. Yeah. So I called them. Right. And they were actually able to find the receipt. I had to tell them that dock number, what the time was, the load number. And of course, I provided them with my email and they sent it to me because right. actually the lumper was 
$325. And if I would not provide it, my load would get short paid because I did not have valid receipt. The yep. guy was an owner operator. Of course, instead of taking responsibility, she starts screaming at me saying that, you know what? It's all rip off. He doesn't care. It's not his responsibility, which of course it is his responsibility because sure. he's right there. He has to take all the pages of BOLs. That's another biggest problem we have in trucking. The driver gives seven pages. They give them one page back and he just leaves. Well, if you gave them seven pages, you have to have the. I don't care if it's originals, but at least copies. And of course, you have to look through them. Did you have any overage? Did you have any damages? Did you have any rejections? Right. Do you know when I started this business seven, eight years ago, when I was brand new and I trusted that my drivers know everything, they would leave without even checking if anything left on the truck. Then they go to the next pickup and he's oh, like, wow. oh my God, I have two pallets of what? Honey <laughs> bears. I'm like, are you kidding me? You already dad had it 60 miles, 60 miles. What do you want? Oh, he's like, do you want me to just disappoint? I'm like, no, you cannot do this because we need to get approval. So after a few accidents like that, I made the policy. And I have that policy till now. Before you leave, I need to make sure that I have a picture of empty trailer. I need to have the scan, all pages, not just the page with a stamp. So I can person, not because I don't trust my drivers, just because sometimes they're tired and sometimes it's five, seven, eight pages. Especially now with the phone technology, it's not that hard. And if I have any lumper receipts or anything, I always have to ask, did you have to pay any lumper? Because sometimes, especially in a reefer company, I mean, they unloaded 2 a.m., 3 a.m. And they might took the money from the broker. But if they're not going to tell me, I am not even going to know that they had to pay lumper. Right. And then 30 days later, 45 days uh, later, factoring is going to short pay me. And they, because they're going to give you money right away. But when the TQL pays them, C. Robinson pays them, they're going to short pay. And it's like, you cannot go back 45 days because we have certain timing. Most of the rate confirmation tells us as a dispatcher that any accessorial charges, lumpers, receipts have to be submitted within 48 hours. If yeah. you do not and PODs, of course, proof of delivery. And right. all my students know we had BOL with a stamp, with not, without OSNDs, it's become POD and a lumper receipt. If you don't do that, what the brokers do? Well, they can charge you $25, $50, $75. still going to receive their paperwork, but this is a way to make money. So can you picture if you have 20, 25 trucks and you as a dispatcher, you as an accountant, you as an owner, do not have this policy. What's going to happen? That 25 bucks today, five times, 50 bucks tomorrow, oh, five of times. It's a lot yeah. of money involved. That's right. why, I mean, um, you know, I am direct. I am, and I am teaching my dispatchers to prevent all of this. And right. to prevent, you need to have knowledge, how it works. That's why we invited you today so my students understand what is a lumper service why do we have to pay who is paying what is the revised rate confirmation what is a driver assist right who do they have to start screaming or not screaming right who yeah. to give 20 bucks or not to give 20 bucks and how can we change this industry for better yep yeah so, and yeah is there anything you would like to uh, give as an, um, you know, as a advice for new dispatchers. Like yes, point. encourage. In, like I said, re relationship with the unloading service, relationship with the higher management in the facility. Try to get to them, get to know them, have conversations with them. Let them, you know, talk about their families. You know, people want to tell you about their families and the things they're doing. Listen to them and let them spend some time sharing with you about themselves. Build that relationship because people, you know, friends deal with friends. Pe friends buy from friends. So make a friend, okay, in that warehouse that you're going into. 
whether it's the unloading service or whether it's the upper management, make a friend. And then encourage your drivers to be kind when they come to the, come to check in. Yeah. Uh, it's tough They're I know they're tired. I know they're struggling. I can't tell you how many times I've had a manager, one of my managers get spit at or spit on by a driver. I can't tell you how many times, I've had a manager get almost beat up by a driver that was out of control. And I, I get it. I get the struggles they're going through. But encourage your drivers to be kind, and they will get uh, – it's not that people will do more for you. It's that those that are abusive will get less done for. So don't be abusive, you know, and, and, and I would encourage your, your dispatchers to learn relationships, building relationships. That's really important. Okay. And then the other thing is get the pricing structure of all the warehouses that you can get, get them to send it to you. And then you'll have a whole book of all of these price sheets. What about the black book? Because I advise them to start having the black book and do not take loads to certain shippers and receivers. Yeah, without a doubt. If you've got a if you got a shipper that's causing problems, yeah, I mean I hear that all the time. And you know what? It makes a difference because I've been in warehouses where they have had that reputation that nobody wanted to come to them. And their bosses, the upper management in that facility, was not happy about it. And they worked very hard to change their attitude. I can remember many times they installed us as an unloading service to try to, to improve their reputation with the carriers that they were finally going to get somebody in there that could unload their trucks in a quick, you know, in a, in a, in a efficient time. So I've had that happen too in, in different locations. So, so at the yeah. end of our life today, first we want appreciate all the drivers. We want to thank, yes. thank them. We want to appreciate everybody who has our logistic solutions, right? Who is unloading and loading yeah. our trucks. They are experts in that. We want to thank all of our dispatchers because we also need to be appreciated. Yeah. We need to be respected. You know how many times we get screamed from shippers, receivers, brokers, drivers. Well, we are doing our job. We are connecting all this. We yeah. want to make sure brokers get respected as you well. You remember what I told you about dispatchers? Yes. What? <laughs> that's, that's the old saying that we had is, you know, when a dispatcher lies, when they move their lips. <laughs> wow, that's not something. That's I know true. it's not true. We I know it's not true. The industry. So here, and you wanted and to. You're right. We we need to respect to the entire industry. Smart, smart man, right now, I can tell you this. Uh -huh. Dispatchers are not the liars. We are the storytellers. I know. <laughs> storytellers, that's a good one. Stick to that because we're not the liars and we are good storytellers. And why do we need to tell that stories? Well, I tell you why. Because you guys are not unloading me on time. So I have to come up with a story <laughs> right. for my next pickup. So you actually make me kind of a liar because my truck is not out of there in a timely manner. Yeah, so I'm, when, I'm holding, I'm holding up a, an unloader to keep him from going home and he can't go home because that load that was supposed to be there at three and it's now 6 PM. And I'm saying, please stay, please stay to unload that load. The dispatcher said he's on his way. <laughs> well, but again, why are we late to you? Yeah. Why are we late to you? Because we were held on a previous. previous. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. That's how it's a vicious cycle. Oh, it's yeah. It is. Cycle. But in the end of the day, personally, yes. me, I am on a mission to change trucking industry with the yeah. help of my students through educating them, to, through empowering them, to yeah. giving them knowledge, through bringing people like you who can share their experiences. And I think. I think this road is not going to be an easy road. I did not pick up a really easy mission. I could have picked up a different mission, you know, open some beauty spa or something, right? <laughs> Women in a truck and we are outnumbered, but we can be heard. And oh, we yes. actually, like you said, we are better storytellers. So <laughs> we can change this industry together. There you go. So see, my students are laughing. So they are having a good time. I just want to 
uh, say thank you again for being on the show. I My hope pleasure. now you understand what we do. And I'm looking forward to see you on a future. I'm going to be convention. watching. Not just watching. You need to subscribe. You need to share. But also, I really would like to connect and kind of try to help everybody in the trucking industry. You know, through your sure. side, our side, and change people's life. Uh, so, I mean, we have a lot of different ideas. And who knows? Maybe we will partner up, you know? Women in trucking, we can think about faster way to load and load, right? We can always do better but it was my pleasure again Mine thank too. thanks again i'll see you soon i'm gonna say goodbye to you because i will talk for a few more minutes to okay. my future students i'll see you soon thank you, thank now. you for the time anytime you need so guys i hope you did enjoy our guest we had a really nice conversation and now you're not going to be surprised about the lumber service. You're going to know what to do. I just wanted to take a few seconds of your time and tell you that, yes, our September class is sold out. I cannot fit any more students. Usually I do not go over than 30. This class is already going to be 40 students. That's why. If you're really looking to sign up for my classes, if you love the way I teach, if you want to change trucking industry, make sure to sign up for October, November classes because they are filling out really fast. For all my previous students, remember, we are having our mentorship already going on. Start signing up. We are having extra two trainings every month. And of course, October is coming and we have our safety and IFTA. And as I am telling you all the time, learn, improve, use the skills, and one day you can be a pro dispatcher like me. And I love you all and I appreciate you being here and I'm always here for you. Make sure you reach out, make sure you learn and share the positive attitude. Thank you, Aliyah. And let's remember again, this is a week of appreciating our drivers. I'll see you next Monday. Love you all. Stay safe on the road. Please share in the groups and let's change trucking for better. Love you all. <music>